To wear one's hair naturally is to avoid the chemical process of changing your hair's natural texture. The reasons why women choose to go natural varies from one person to the next. Whatever the reason, one thing remains the same. Most people have a choice in the matter, while others do not. Sharon Ruffin started her natural hair journey after conquering her first bout with cancer. During that time, the chemo treatments caused her to lose her hair. But when it grew back, she decided to embrace it in its natural state. My natural hair journey started it really started in 2009, 2010, because when I was growing up, I had um, very short hair. It wasn't even long enough to put in a ponytail. But it wasn't until um, my husband had passed in 2009, my two daughters started wearing their heads in, dread, um, in dreads. And so I decided to go dread because I didn't like taking care of my hair. Even though I'm a stylist and I've been doing it for years, what really got me natural is my mother, my sister, my two aunts, they all were in uh, swim classes. They started swimming, they all went natural, and I was basically jealous that they got to get in the water and swim, and I couldn't because then I'd have to blow dry, condition, and, you know, every day. And sometimes they would go two and three times a week to swim classes. I actually went natural by default. Uh, my mom went natural first. She just decided, oh, I'm not gonna do any more perms. And then my sister decided, oh, me too. And then before I knew it, it'd been like nine months. And I was like, I haven't gotten a perm in like a year. What's going on? But I just left it alone because it just started curling up. And I was like, oh, well, this isn't so bad. My sister was like, oh, just put some water in it. It'll just do its own thing. You just let it be. I'm like, let it be. Okay, well, we'll, we'll let it be. And then, it just it did what it did, and now here we are. <laughs> and then I went and chopped off like most of it. So I'm undercut now, but I love it. I stopped getting relaxers, I'd say the summer of 2009. And really what sparked it, I had a little bit of hair loss in the crown of my hair. And when I saw that breakage, I was like, uh-uh, I can't, <laughs> I can't do this. And Plus, I had been, you know, looking at some of the women on television and in magazines and things like that. And I always wanted to try that natural look, but I just wasn't sure how it would look on me. My uh, decision to, to, go, uh, to go natural and stop priming my hair it was a, a decision about health. I felt like when I went to grad school, I just became healthier. I made better choices in my diet and exercise. And I simply did not want chemicals in my food, and I didn't want chemicals in my hair either, right? So that was a, a, a health turn. It wasn't that I read, you know, some radical piece, and I was like, oh, man. I'm about to go, you know, I'm about to go natural and I'm going to cut my hair off and I'm going to do this. You know, I definitely did not have that kind of a moment. It was just a choice of I want to be healthier and I think that this will make me um, just an overall healthier person. I felt like I was wasting so much of my time in these beauty shops. I remember once I went to the salon that I had been going to on a regular basis and I was so dissatisfied. They had 
uh, booked too many people. And we were waiting and waiting and waiting. And now this is three hours, this is going on three hours, and I'm still under the dryer. So I really got upset about that. So I took the curlers out and sat in the chair and told the beautician to give me that comb, give me that, give me cream, give me something to put on my hair. And I curled it. And she said, oh, so you curl your hair yourself. Oh, Yo, you're doing a nice job. This is great. Oh, it's beautiful. And I thought, how dare you say that to me when you should be doing this, but you're standing here. So uh, give me that. Give me this. Give me. I used their products, curled my hair. <laughs> and uh, when I got ready to leave, she was telling me how much they were charging me. And I, I will not pay you that. I will give you $10 because that's how much I think this is worth. Have a good day. I won't be seeing you again. And I walked out and felt so bad. I, was, I felt so bad that I did that because I did need to go back, but I was embarrassed, so I didn't go. For many women, returning their hair to its natural state is often a journey of self-exploration, self-awareness, and self-love. I think a lot of women who start this journey it is a journey not to just loving your hair, but self-love. I feel like a lot of women, again, they may think that the European style, the straight hair, the weaves, and no shade to the weaves, I mean, because that's a protective style, don't get me wrong, but I feel like a lot of times women think that you are supposed to look a certain way to conform. But again, I feel like one of the biggest things I could tell her is to just look at yourself and know you're beautiful. This is the way that you were made, so embrace it. Everybody has a different texture, everybody has a different length. And I just think the biggest thing is finding what works for your hair and, and moving forward with that. It definitely taught me a lot about loving yourself, loving who I am as a person, loving everything that comes from me. I don't have to have straight hair to be pretty. I don't have to have straight hair to be a good person. I don't, my hair doesn't have to be straight in order to have good hair. My hair is good. It is flourishing. <laughs> After I started working with it, I started getting these comments. Specifically, one weekend we were in Culpeper and this man said, I like what you're doing with your hair, sister. Oh, okay, thank you. This is something, maybe I can work with this. and. As the time went on, I discovered that the natural hair gave me more power. I wasn't as shy. I wouldn't go places because of my hair sometimes. But with the natural hair, um, all I need is to know when and where. Perhaps not as big in numbers, but many black women were fortunate enough to have been natural all their lives. I definitely thank our mother for not jumping to society's heels and, you know, for not giving us a perm at any type of chemical products in our hair because it definitely helps us in the long run. Well, all of my friends were either white so they had straight hair and, you know, um, they didn't have, you know, natural hair like we, like I grew up having. My best friends, all of my friends, they had relaxers in their hair. So I did, I was the one that was crying to my parents every day. Oh my gosh, can we, can I get a relaxer? Hair texture is a topic amongst black women, whether they wear their hair naturally or not. At times, one's own blackness or ethnic authenticity is questioned based on the texture of their hair. It's like a, a setback to everybody that like, oh wow, you have a really good grain of hair. What You have to be mixed with something, like you just can't be black the whole time. Like, so, you know, after a while we just got tired of it and we we're like, we're black. We're black. <laughs> we're, we're black. black. And they're like, <laughs> you sure? <laughs> no, black and no. what? And, well, <laughs> no, black no, and black. Where, where are you from? Like, <laughs> we're black. America. Yeah. <laughs> In grade school, I was always picked on. I was always teased. So whether my hair was straight, whether it was in a ponytail, whether I tried to do my natural curly ponytail, 
something was always said. Not necessarily my family, but just adults that I would encounter, whether it be school, church. Um, use, use your complexion to your advantage. Make sure you have that straight hair because that's your way to get that job or that's your way to get that casting call for certain things that I may have been interested in. For a long time, I was like that. I want my hair to look like that. I want my hair to get like that. But I had to realize that your hair is not going to do that. Everybody's different. Just like your fingerprints aren't the same as anyone else's. My sister and I, she's natural too, and our hair is nothing alike. She has a wider curl, I have a tighter curl. My mom, same way, and she's my mom. It hurts my heart a little bit to hear other people say, I don't like my hair. I wish I had this hair. I'm like, no, your hair is beautiful. It's beautiful, whether it's, what do they call a 4C, whether it's like super kinky or super wavy. All hair does different things. Things that look good on somebody with kinkier hair don't always look good on somebody with wavy hair and vice versa. I was that kid who would always see those models on the commercials getting out of the pool and they would be brushing their hair back and it was flat and it was straight and I wanted that. And now I'm just like, I wish my hair would do that mess when I get out the pool. <laughs> The effects of slavery have lived on much longer than the physical captivity that blacks endured. From that time, black women have held on to the mentality that everything about their natural appearance is not acceptable and have passed that idea down through the generations, whether consciously or subconsciously. I had a, a cousin that used to live with us and her hair was very long and very good. good she had good hair and we didn't have good hair. So when she got angry with us, that's some of the things she would say to us, you know, look at your nappy hair, you know, I bet you wish you had good hair like me. And what is good hair anyway? Hair is hair. The hair that grows from your head. How is that not good enough? I always would look at certain things that it went back to slavery or the mentality that was I would say brainwashed into um, the slaves because how they looked and the color of their skin and even at the time the texture of their hair. But we don't realize the effects of that mentality. I think in a lot of areas where we as a race of people are manipulated and still controlled and we don't even realize it. Well, again, I think that kind of all goes back to just the slavery mentality, us trying so hard to conform and be what they want us to be, but not necessarily what they want us to be, but what we think they want us to be, because I don't want to be called that N-word. I don't want to have my nappy hair out, so I'm going to make sure that it looks as close to what I believe they want, so I won't stand out in a black way. So I feel like a lot of the black men and women who... Um, I guess in some ways may feel ostracized about having that natural hair. I think it's, it's just because of how they were brought up, thinking that we have to look a certain way. The media world has probably done more harm than good when it comes to representing women of color. Often it seems that only a certain type of black woman with a certain type of look is accepted on a larger platform. In 2016, is there evidence of change? Um, every so often I'll get an email, you know, asking me to go back to the straight look. Because some people think, some men and women think that the straighter, longer hair looks better on me. And usually my response is that the straighter, longer hair does not grow from my scalp naturally. And it's a lot to keep up <laughs> that straight, long hair. And so right now, I'm comfortable with my natural hair. And plus, in the television business, we all have consultants, not just here at NBC 12, there are consultants for all of the stations here. And basically all of the women, black, white, whatever, we all look the same. We have the same type style dresses. We have the same type haircuts, long, straight, or even short, straight. Somebody needs to be a little bit different. Why not me? More times than not for black women, the criticism of hair comes from other African-Americans. Negative words or looks are commonplace in a crowd of your own. So the question becomes, are we as a people working on our own demise? You know, again, I haven't received a lot of negative emails at all, but I remember it was one email, and it was from a, a gentleman who said that he and his family uh, didn't think that that was perhaps the most professional look and that it would stop me perhaps from moving on up in this career. 
well, first of all, sir, you're not in this business. And second of all, I get more calls now with natural hair from outside of this, uh, outside of this news station than I did ever before because it's something different. And it's me naturally. I've been places, I've been in restaurants and everything where people, uh, Caucasian women, Indian women, or you know, they say, how can they get their hair like mine? They want, they want a kinky. They other hairstylists that I do their hair, my Caucasian friends, they all want to try it and see what it's like to have that big curly hair. For African American women, the hesitation to wear their natural hair is often in direct relation to the professional backlash that may occur and there are not a lot of people like me in my office. Actually, I am the only person of color in my office setting. So I was definitely afraid, like if I come to work, you know, with an afro or with, you know, curls that one of them is lopsided and the other one is curled, you know, right, are they gonna feel a different type of way about me? Like, are my patients going to look at me weird? Am I going to be perceived in a different way? Um, am I going to, you know, get sat down like, well, your hair is too wild, so we need you to kind of scale that back because you're in a... I just didn't know how it was going to come off to my coworkers or my patients, but um, they've actually been going through the journey with me. So it was really nice that um, they just, they embraced it with me. Like, well, what are you going to do tomorrow to your hair? Like, they were all just as excited about the experiences I was. So that my news director is actually the one who saw me at a party. It was a going away party for uh, one of my coworkers. And he saw my um, hair, it was, you know, twisted, similar to what I'm wearing now. And he said, Carla, why don't you ever wear that on television? And I had never, I had thought about it, but I never thought about approaching him because in my mind, I just thought he was gonna shoot down the idea. But he asked me, he said, why don't you ever wear that? on television, your natural hair. I think it looks good. Well, that's all he had to say. Then I think within the next maybe two weeks, I was on air. I have clients who run whole corporations and they're the only woman in a position of, you know, power and authority there, much less African-American. They can't do it yet. They're afraid to, they don't know what, you know, how people are gonna see them, if they're gonna pay more attention to their hair instead of, you know, what they're saying. Are they still gonna take them seriously? It's real feelings that people have. I had a job interview probably three years ago, maybe four, closer to when I was, um, fresh out of college and I remember I had a job interview oh my gosh I wanted the job so bad and I wanted to have my hair in a curly bun because I was natural then but I didn't really wear it out as much and so I, I had it up and I remember um, a role model in my life <laughs> told me oh no 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 you better not go on that job interview with that bun you better go get that hair pressed out and so that was always a fear of mine. I think even to this day, I don't go on a lot of interviews that I feel like I want to go on, not because I don't think I qualify for the job, but because I'm conflicted about how my hair should look. I do think in academia there is a little bit more leeway. However, I do think that the notion of having a polished professional look, the rhetoric and the, the kind of um, ideology behind that um, is also one that alienates black women in terms of the expression of their hair. Overall, um, the thing I see the most in terms of sort of um, around discourse or public discourse around natural hair um, in a, from an interpersonal space is that a lot of times I feel as a black woman, um, our bodies are sort of this um, on public display or sort of this public space where people feel as if they can sort of touch us or pet us, but particularly on our bodies, our hair, it's like that that's some kind of open space for people to feel free to sort of um, explore their curiosities in a way that's um, inappropriate. A lot of times, oftentimes you'll see people want to touch black women's hair um, or have inappropriate questions, right? So sometimes you may get a question like, is that your hair, right? Or um, or you change it so often, right? And these are, these are sort of microaggressions, right? It doesn't mean that they have to be bad intentions or that they're trying to hurt your feelings or any of those types of things, but I think that um, again, how often do we ask other people about if their body parts belong to them or um, if, um, you know, reasons for changing things. The key piece being that it's, it's nothing wrong with asking questions and being curious, but I feel like, again, 
nobody's body is sort of this public open space um, I feel for the most part with hair is that it is with black women you know what I mean so like so like if if there was a, a white woman who had breast implants I don't think people would go up and be like are those your real breasts can I touch them right because that's inappropriate so what is it about hair that we feel that that's a, a freer space somehow even though it's still objectifying a part of piece, a person's body when people watch me on TV I'm not there to look pretty I'm there to deliver the news and you take it or leave it. <laughs> yeah. That's what I say. You know, I'm, I'm not here. And that's what usually what I respond, especially to the men that email me. I'm not here. I'm not here getting paid to look pretty for you. I, I, I appreciate you thinking. <laughs> you, I appreciate you thinking that. But that's not why I'm here. I'm here to deliver the news. And so, I mean, you have to tap into what you know, because we all have a gift. You have to tap into what makes you special and be happy with that. I think it's a larger issue about the ways that women's bodies are policed, right? The expectation that you, you gotta wear Spanx, you gotta keep it in, you gotta, you know, it's always about disciplining your body and, and maintaining it in a, in a particular way that is contained, right? And I think black women, it becomes even more um, evident because of the language around their hair. Um, and I think definitely in our community, it's, it's certainly more heightened and even more policed. Natural hair means that a hair has not been treated with any chemical relaxers. An afro, that small or voluminous halo of highly textured hair that floats above some black women's scalps, does not mean that she's about to set off the revolution. There is nothing dreadful about dreadlocks, they're also not a sign that someone smells, sells, or smokes marijuana. And by the way, they're locks, not dreads. And a black woman who chemically straightens her hair is not trying to be white. When in doubt, of course, the best course of action is to understand a black woman by what's in her head, not what's on it. So right now, this is what natural is to me. No wig. Scarves. Natural. I dreamed the other night that I was hiring a clip and guess who was on my right? My hair is beautiful. My hair is unique. My hair is transitioning. My hair is bushy. My hair is amazing. My hair is curly. My hair is temperamental, but I love it. My hair is authentic. My hair is kinky. My hair is very complex. My hair is nappy. My hair is poetic. My hair is spectacular. My hair is my freedom. My hair is unashamed. My hair is everything. My hair is me. My hair is free.